Have you ever needed a way to more dynamically search a database? So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to build a search field where you can search for items, select the one you want, and then even include a link back to that row in the source data so you can edit or change it as needed. So to start with, we're going to go through how to search a single field, and then we'll build our way through and include building links at the end. All right, so let's get started. So first of all, we'll do the basics. So I'm going to show you how to search names and then return them in this field. So we're going to start here, do a drop down, and then change this criteria to drop down from a range. Click on this select data range, and then I'm just going to click in here, come over here to our data, and then I can just click maybe on that A, the top there. Or you can click on here, start, drag it down. And then either way, we want to make sure at the end that it starts in row two. If you have a one column header or if you have multiple, then just make sure this is the start of the data. And then remove the end reference there. Hit OK. And then it may take a minute for a refresh, maybe on how much data you have. Scroll down to the bottom, advanced options. And then I'm going to do plain text. I'm going to show you what the difference is here in a second. So let's come back over here. And so it looks like nothing happened here. But if I start typing, you can see there's options showing up below. So this is a drop down, but right now it doesn't look like one. So we can change it to a drop down. So we come back over here and we again scroll down to the bottom, advanced options. We can change this to an arrow. And then you can actually do this as well. But if you're just using it for typing, you can keep it clean and not use that arrow. And then I'm just going to come down here, change this to plain text. And then it just makes it look like a search box. So if we come up with something here, maybe we have a name. Now we just need to return it here. And so I'm just going to do a filter formula here. Come over here, select this data, come down a couple rows and delete that end reference, comma. And then we're going to use one condition and we're just going to match the name. So again, remove those rows, hit equals. I'm going to click back on my first tab and then just click on my search cell. So a very simple formula. And there it is that returns that row. So pretty simple formula there. It's just looking at that tab and then comparing that first column to our search box. So now we can just do whatever we want here. We can come in here on Tressler. And so you can start typing as much as you want. And then you can select the option that you need and they'll return it just like that. So one thing here is if we start doing this, you'll notice things aren't sorted alphabetically. It's kind of a really random assortment there. So one thing that may help is sorting alphabetically. And so I'm gonna use a helper tab to do this. So I just hit plus to add a sheet. And then I'm just gonna rename this helper. You can rename it settings, you can rename it whatever. And then I'm just going to use this sort formula on these names. And again, remove the end row reference, enter. And now we have all those names, but they're sorted alphabetically. And so now I need to come and change this drop down. And so this one instead of data now needs to be helper. So I can change it here or I can go through the same process again. So I'm just going to change it here just to show you what that would look like. If I can spell correctly here, helper. And then I think I'm starting, let me check here, I'm starting in row one so we could change that as well or we could add a header i'm just going to do this change this to a to a and now if we type in here a you can see everything is sorted alphabetically and so this this just makes it look a lot better as you're going through when it's sorted and so it's still going to work because we're still matching those options so next, let's look at how to search multiple columns. So what if we want to search maybe email and or street? Let's go ahead and add these three columns. So name, email, and street address, and then we can search any of those three. So this one's actually not too hard to add. So we have a sort here. All we need to do is add in the options from email and street. And so the way we're going to do that is inside our sort formula i'm going to use something called flatten and then change this to c and then just like that 
So it looks like my sample data has some weird addresses here, starting with zeros, but we'll just go ahead and go with it. And so what this flatten does is it takes these multiple columns and puts them into a single column. And then we can sort them, and then we have our results just like that. So come back here, we can do the same thing. We can start typing and see the names. We could start typing an address and see an address. Now, if I select an address, we have an error because it's right now it's only looking in the name field. So again, this is a pretty simple update. We're gonna make this apply to name, email, or street. The way I'm gonna do that is we're going to use basically an or syntax in filter. So I'm gonna wrap this in parentheses. And then what I'm gonna do is a plus symbol. And then I'm going to paste my other one. So I need to update these columns here. But what this plus does is this makes it a or scenario. I can actually do times and I'll make it a and, but you could just do them without the parentheses and it still do the same thing. So that's not gonna be a common usage, but you can do plus. And so what it's doing is we're basically saying, it, so it's the true false is what it's returning, right? And so you can convert that into zeros or ones. So zero is false and one is true. And so if you think about that in that sense, what this is looking for is, can I find any ones? So if it says zero, I didn't find any ones, which is gonna be the case in this case. It's not gonna find that in names. So this would be zero. This one would also be zero, so looking at emails. But this one's going to find a one. It's gonna find this field stone. And so zero plus zero plus one means there's a match. There is our result. And so we can search again in emails. And so if we start, let's say, Bing, there we go. I was expecting Gmail, but there's apparently no Gmails in my sample data. Um, so we could look at, let's say reference.com. So if we start typing reference, hit reference and voila, there it is. So this is super cool, super easy way to quickly and easily search and return the things that you want. But I'm gonna show you a couple more things. So first of all, what if you need kind of a unified field? So for example, here we have street, city, state, and zip, but you may want to be able to search them as one unit, not individually, just the street. So what I'm gonna show you how to do here is let's add a column over here to the right, and I just right click and then insert column left or right, I'm sorry. Then in this field, we're gonna combine these columns. So there's many reasons you could do this. You could use this as a ID, for example. Um, so we could put name together with address, stuff like that. Um, it could be the name, maybe if you're doing a database. Uh, for example, if you, if you sell cars, maybe you could put the year, make model, and put that all together in one field. So that way you're not trying to search, because in this case, you could only search one column at a time. So this way we could search multiple columns and return those. So for example, if you had 2025 GMC Yukon, you don't want to search GMC and then return all GMCs, you wanna be able to search the full thing. So in this one example, we're gonna use our address here. And so as example, there often is duplicate streets, right? So what we're gonna do here is an array formula and then we're going to combine these fields. So we could do C2 to C, and let's add a space between those, and ampersand. And what we're doing here is we're taking the column, and then we use ampersand, and in this case, we're adding a blank space, and then we're gonna add our next column, so D2 to D. So let's just let that fill in here. Let's open this up a little bit, resize, let's do 250, something like that. I'm gonna add one more column to the right just so we can see this is not always running off the right side of the screen there. So there we go. Let me left format those. So we may want to add a comma. We probably need to add a comma there. And then let's go ahead and bring in the rest. So another ampersand. And then let's do another comma and a space. And then we'll do our, if I can get an ampersand there. E2 to E, and there we go. And then let's do another space. We won't do a comma this time, and then we'll do our zip. 
this gives you flexibility in how you want to combine those. You can also use things like a dash, for example, or a colon. You can use whatever you want in whatever you're using to best describe it. So I'm going to take this and put it actually up in here. And so I'm just going to do title, something like that, and then put in my array formula. And so what we're doing here is we're tucking this formula up into the header column or the header row, sorry. And so we use a curly brace on either side. And then we put our title here. So this would probably be, we could call this address, for example, in this case. And then we have our array formula. And notice I took out that equals because the equals is right here. All right, so let's go ahead and let that fill in. And so there we have that. So we could use that as a search and I'll go ahead and show you that real quick. So in this case, we're gonna use G. And let's come back here. We'll use G and we don't need this flatten anymore. We'll get rid of that. Since we're only using one column. And we have some, oh, we got some blank rows here at the bottom. So what I wanna do here, is make sure that there's actually a value. So let's say if C2 to C is blank, we'll show nothing. All right, now let's come back here and now it should start there. And now what we wanna do is come back over here. So now we can search again. But in this case, we're again getting nothing because we're looking in these columns. So what we need to do is go back to this, but change this one to G. And there we go. So now we can search multiple columns and return it just like this. So one more thing I wanna do here. So I'm gonna add a new column here and pull this open. Let's look at how to add a link to our results because this is great, but we can't do anything with this. If I try to type over, it breaks the reference. So I can view the data like this, but I can't edit it. And so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to select this whole column here, and then I'm going to use this paint format and paint it over here to link. So what we're going to do here is create a link so we can click on that link and go straight to here. So first of all, let's find this one. So let's go to data and search for this right here. Perfect. So let's look at what it would take to make a link to this. So right click, scroll down, view more cell actions, get link to this cell. Now let's come back here and maybe up here we'll paste this. So we have quite a bit going on here. We don't need this first part of the link. All we need is actually starting at this pound sign. So let me delete everything before that. So here is what we need for our link. So this part is referring to the sheet. So each sheet or tab in here has what's called a GID. And so if you look, this one's zero, meaning it's the tab I created first. So the first tab when you create a Google Sheet always has ID of zero. And the other ones have different, I don't know if it's random, but Google generated IDs. So that's our sheet. And then we do this ampersand and then it gives a range and it gives a column and then a row number. So if you're creative thinking here, you're probably recognizing where I'm gonna go. And so let's do hyperlink. And then in our hyperlink, first we have the URL and then we have a label. So our URL, let's go ahead and put this first part in there. And then for our title, we could just say this is a link. Something like that, simple. So this currently isn't gonna go anywhere. It's just going to column A. So we're going to use a formula called match. So match, if we pull this open, and grab this name and then come back here, go to data and then match in this column, zero, look at that, 566. So is that same one? Yes, it is. So if we take this formula, match, and then add it with an ampersand at the end of my hyperlink, now if we look over this, it's actually taking us to A566. So what if we click on this? takes us right to that row. So let me scroll up just so you know, it's not just going back to where I was. And let's click on this. Well, there it is, right back to that one again. So let's try something else here. 
let's do let's just try six maybe carry trail so there's jacinda so let's try this again oh 634 and there it takes us to her row in there now one thing we could do as well and so i'm using this name is if we're using this specific street city state and zip we may want to match those instead and so in this example i'm going to show you how to build it out so in this case we'd use e6 and we'd have to build out the string the same way so f6 and g6 and space and you know, like keeping time is what it sounds like all right and then this one needs to be g no and let's see if that comes up with it yep look at that so that's searching correctly so this is how you do it if you are using multiple fields and for example if that name there's maybe multiple names or multiple whatever right then you can't use a single field you don't want to use multiple so that's how you could use a field like this where you're combining multiple options and then now you can come up with that so with this formula here let's do something like this if c6 is blank do nothing otherwise show link and then let me drag this down and then let me just fix that border down there real quick scroll up all right so in this case we may not have a bunch of results if if we do something like a2 to a is not equal to blank just so you can see multiple results then we can come down here and you can see each link corresponds to that person all right so that is it for today's video make sure to like and subscribe if this video was helpful for you and check out the other videos on our channel for more tutorials on both google sheets and app script and as always have a great day